In the previous video, we dealt with simple output setups. In this one, I'm going to try and show you a little bit about input switches and software outputs to, to use these to create very complex setups. Again, I'll be using the AutoSim Engine Simulator and the information is on the screen. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go through our conditions now. Now, we want to have a valve or a solenoid and we want to control it by manifold pressure and RPM. But we also want the valve to shut off if the intake temp, the coolant temp, the EGTs, battery volts, and even a momentary switch. It all We will set various parameters for these things that once these occur, the solenoid will turn off, will be inhibited. So let's start with we want to have a switch and we want this switch to be timed where when we press it the output turns off for a time that we set. So let's begin. The first place you should go as I can explain in the last video is output setups. In this case we want to create a switch variable which is basically having a variable in the software to be able to use rather than use the actual switch because we want the variable to do different things for us. So we go down to IO switch to variable one and we select on no output. There we go, on no output. Now when we go back up to in, in the M1 menu, you will notice that that first one is no longer grayed out. It's in black and you can go into it. So we hit enter. And now this is where you set the actual physical pin connected to your switch. You select whichever input you've used switch input you've used on the SM4 or SM3. In this case, I've used switch 1 input, pin 18. Now, mode allows you to use four different modes for your switch. Um, straight through is simple. One position of the switch is on, the other position is off. Toggle is basically turn on and off, and it goes to one condition, on and off to the previous condition, on and off to the next condition, and so forth. Stretch pulse allows you to turn the switch on and then when you turn it off it continues to stay on for the time which you set. Monostable is what I'm using in this example and I usually use this with a momentary switch like a horn button and what happens is you just have to press the switch for a moment and it will stay active for however long you set it. In this case 7 seconds. So if the driver presses that button quickly one quick push it'll stay active for 7 seconds. Alright so that explains that now, what we're going to do next, go back to output setup, and we're going to want to set up a software output and our physical output. So we're going to use two GPCs. So we go up now, we start with GPC 11. And that will be at disable like all the rest. We hit enter, and we're going to scroll along and select one of the software outputs. In this case, I'm selecting software output 1. Now I'm going to go up to GPC1, which again will be disabled if you didn't have anything enter, enter, and I'm going to select the pulse switch modulator pin I wish to use, which in this case would be PWM2. Select that, and we're good to go. And once we do this, like in the last video, we'll see that GPC1 and GPC11 are available to set up. Now first I'm going to set up my software output. Now, we learned about inhibits last time. So first of all, set up, we're going to pick a table, and we pick a 10 by 6 table in this case. And you can set a name, I just left the name as GPC. Now we go to inhibit controls. What we're going to do is we're going to start our inhibits. What we want now is for the valve to be inhibited if the temperature goes above 60. So therefore we set our minimum for a temperature that would never be achieved and we set our maximum for 60 degrees. Anything above 60 degrees and our valve shuts off. Now we go to input variable 2 and remember that software switch we set up? We use that as a parameter. When we enter we can see that that's these input switches are in here as parameters. Enter. Now we set minus 5% as the minimum because we want when the switch is off for the valve to be active. Now when we turn the switch on the value will go to 100%, so we set our inhib inhibit maximum for 90%. In this case, we have our inhibit duration for 0.48 seconds, and that's self-explanatory. 
All right, our next step now is we're going to go now, this is where it gets a little complex, we're going to go to table setup now, and because we want coolant to be used as well, we're going to select manifold pressure and coolant. Once we've done that, we'll go down to our table. Now as you, as you can see in this table here, I've set this table up where it has coolant by manifold pressure. Now once the coolant temperature is below 55, at 50, the GPC the software GPC job software duty cycle will be zero. Software output duty cycle, beg pardon, will be zero. The temperature goes above 100 and goes to 105, it again will be zero. Now what I've done here is use manifold pressure on the top axis. As you can see, I've assigned duty cycles 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. These will now be used in the y axis of the main PWM table and what it means is that in that table 20 will equal 120 absolute pressure 40 will equal 160, 60 will equal 200 and 80 will equal 240 and 100 will equal 280. So let's kind of test this now to see what happens. If we turn our engine on and we'll see if it really works well, we'll take our, our manifold pressure and we'll raise it and we'll see exactly what happens if we raise it and we can see now that we're going across as we raise our manifold pressure as we turn it down we go down if we take our coolant temperature and we lower it a bit we'll see that it'll drop into the zero and if we raise it and go above 100 we'll see that it makes the software output go to zero now once that's complete then we can now go now and set up our main table, which is the table that's actually doing the controlling of the valve, the pulse switch modulation. Now for this one, our setup would be, because we're using one of the earlier GPCs, it has more, more parameters that can enter, but we're basically using this GPC set point for the table. We want the big large table, 10 by 8. We want no feedback and the GPC name you can name as anything you want depending on what you're using the valve for. Now, our inhibit now, we have two variables for inhibit. We have EGT below 450 and EGT above 950. So if the EGTs go above 950, it means that the, the output is inhibited, your valve is inhibited. If it's below 450, your valve is inhibited. Same with battery voltage, below 11.5, inhibit, above 14.5 inhibit. Inhibit will stay active in this case for three seconds. Now we go down to our table setup. Now we're going to set up engine speed as our x-axis and as I explained our y-axis will be software output 1 and you would select that in here like I said you can select any axis, any, any parameter you want for an axis but in this case we want software output 1. Now in our table Realistically, what those numbers with software output mean is that they equal load. So 20, as we said, was uh, 120 and 100 was 280, etc, etc. And we can view this if we turn the engine on and start it running. We can see now that if we go now and we lower our boost levels down, we'll see that our parameter is moving. If we go to below 120, it'll drop to zero. If we go up, the more we go up, the more it goes into the correct load. As we can see, 200 is 60. And 220, 240, sorry, is 80. And we can then go ahead and set our different RPMs. And we have now a three-dimensional map based on load and RPM. But all the parameters that we explained before will now function. So let's test it. We said that anything above 60 degrees intake temperature, the GPC duty now should drop to zero. That's the one in blue you see at the bottom, GPC1 duty. So let's take our intake temperature and let's, let's carry that up past 60 and see what happens. And there we go. We have zero GPC1 duty. Drop it below, it'll come back on. All right, our next parameter was coolant below 50, above 100. So let's try this. Our coolant temperature drops below 50. And there we go, zero. And our coolant temperature goes above 100. And 
there we go it turned off all right so that's that now we set again our battery voltage if our battery voltage drops below 11.5 we can see battery voltage on the screen so we're gonna go to 11.5 first of all let me set the um, coolant temperature back correctly otherwise it will not come back on there we go so now we set our battery voltage and keep an eye on GPC duty because that red thing will not always move but the actual duty will show zero so let's go now and take our voltage down and there we have it zero GPC one duty is at zero turn our voltage up and it will come back on in three seconds now the same will go for EGTs unfortunately we don't have the EGT on the screen but when I turn it you'll be able to to see it go off and go on and there we go it should be off it's below 450 and now we're gonna set it up above 950 when it comes back on we set it up above 950 and it's off GPC 1 GD 0 and now it's back on our last thing is to test our switch when we throw our switch you see it goes to zero and it'll stay there now for seven seconds until it returns back to the correct duty cycle and basically that's it so now you have your you have your valve setup being controlled by RPM and manifold pressure it's going to go off if the intake is above 60 it's going to go off if the coolant is below 55 it's going to go off if it's above 100 it'll go off if your EGT is below 450 or above 950 and it will also go off if your battery voltage is below 11.5 or above 14.5 and lastly if you push your momentary switch it will go off for 7 seconds and that's basically how to set up software outputs thanks for watching